Hey folks, Roy here from Aurora Infotech in Orlando. And today we're gonna to focus on ways in which we can improve your security posture. And I'm gonna give you eight free tips, eight free tips today that you can implement that will actually cost you nothing to implement. But if you don't implement them and you don't follow my guidelines, they do have the potential to cost you a, a ton of money. So here goes. Tip number one, use strong passwords and stop sharing passwords. Can't tell you the amount of times I've gone into organizations and people are freely sharing their business credentials from one to the other. Everybody's logging into their systems, etc. Extremely dangerous folks because particularly from the standpoint of safeguarding data and having accountability in terms of who did what, it creates for a messy situ situation. Number two, you know, safeguard your, your, your passwords and store them securely. And what do I mean by this? Well, you know, you can use a password manager. A password manager is an encrypted vault that takes your password, stores it, encrypts it, and only and you're the only one by having a passphrase that actually has access to those passwords. It's a lot better than writing it down on a piece of sticky note and sticking it on your monitor, sticking it beneath your keyboard, etc., which is no different than putting the key to the front door of your house beneath the rug of your, uh, beneath the mat at the front door, or even in a plant near the front door. And 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 and, and, I, and I bet I, I perhaps just, just caused a few of you to go, hmm. <laughs> Number three, make sure you use different passwords for your work and your personal uh, scenarios. Now, you know, in previous videos, I talked about making sure that you have a unique password for every account, whether it's personal or whether work. You know, security is, is, a, is a sense of being, right? It's a state of mind. Um, and to only be secure for eight hours a day and then go into being unsecure, um, well, then you're kind of asking yourself for, for trouble. So make sure that whatever it is that you're practicing at work and improving your security posture, you also practice at work. So separate and unique password for every one of your accounts and use a password manager to, gen to generate those accounts. And moreover, do not utilize your, your, the passwords that you use at home for your work account, because if you ever experience a data breach because of your home scenario, you definitely don't want the attackers to have easy access into your work environment. And so you, the other point, number four, is to augment your level of security by adding multi-factor or enabling multi-factor or two-factor authentication on every one of your online accounts. Anything that touches the internet that requires a username and password to log in should have the ability for you to actually go into the settings and enable the, the second level, a second two-factor authentication. And basically what this is, it's a series of numbers that changes every minute. It's tied to an app that's on your phone. If somebody gets your username and password and they log into your account, they will be asked to provide that code, and guess what? They don't have that code unless, of course, you give it to them. So it's that second line of defense. Think of it as somebody coming to your yard and they're, you know, jumping the fence, uh, but they still can't get into the house because, you know, there's a door there. There's that second level, okay? Um, make sure that you use, once again, different passwords across different sites. Your password manager will help you with that. You know, you don't have to remember passwords. It will auto-generate those for you. It'll make sure they're unique. And the nice thing about that is, once again, is, you know, you're limiting your risk exposure because if one of your accounts gets compromised, the attacker is limited to that account. Think of it as you owning a hotel with 60 rooms and every one of those rooms having a different key to get in, right? Which it should be. But if the attacker, if there was only one master key that the attacker got their hands on, then he pretty much has access to every room in that hotel. And with each room representing your online world, it, it becomes disastrous. Number six, can't tell you the amount of times I've gone into organizations while we're carrying out security audits or cybersecurity assessments and the number of people who are still writing their username and passwords on sticky notes and putting it on monitors or sticking it on the keyboards or, or you know, in drawers, etc. Folks, we have password managers. The nice thing about a password manager, and I, I mentioned this in my previous video, you know, it installs on your phone, it will install on your tablet, it will install on your PC, your Mac. You only have to sign up once for it and it'll be synchronized. So whatever password you store on your phone, you can access on your PC and different things. And when you go to a website, it auto logs you in. So you don't have to worry about that uh, scenario. And if you don't have an account on that website, it will actually 
create an account for you utilizing your email address with a unique password for that account. So make sure that you secure your passwords safely and stop using sticky notes and other, you know, password books and different things like that. Number seven, we mentioned before, create long complex passwords and preferably pass phrases. You know, one of my videos before I spoke about, you know, the new requirements from the FBI in which they're saying no longer to limit yourself to eight, a minimum of eight characters, but really go to a minimum of 15 or 20 characters and use pass phrases, which is, you know, sentences with multiple words, but make sure they're unrelated. And it's fairly simple to do. I mean, you could probably think back of a scenario when you were younger someplace, some favorite moment, whatever, and take a couple things from that environment and sort of create a, a, a sentence. And it does not have to make sure it doesn't flow like a sentence, okay? And stay away from dictionary words, stay away from, you know, uh, um, um, wifey or hubby's name, stay away from kitty's name, stay away from pet names, favorite sports teams, you know, cities, different things like that. Those are all things that can be tracked in, in a whim. And by the way, an eight character password, given today's technology, whether it's alphanumeric or not, uh, can be cracked in a matter of seconds. And here's a bonus tip for you that a lot of people don't think about. Most websites, when you're signing up, will ask you for recovery questions. Recovery questions are typically, and they're typically, I would say typically they're all the same. You know, what's your mother's maiden name? What was your, what school did you attend? What was the mascot of your high school? Uh, which city did you grow up in? Blah, 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 blah. Very simple, basic questions that you know, or a, it's a repeatable pattern across, it's almost like they got the cheat sheet on an upcoming test and they all subscribe to the same questions. And what we tend to do, we tend to sit there and provide the real world answers. Well, guess what? It's very simple for a hacker to go in your social media profiles, whatever, and find the answers to all of those questions. So your mother's maiden name, they could probably go on social media, find out who your mother is and do some research and find out what her maiden name was. Your high school, easy, social media again. The mascot of your high school, social media. The city you were born in, they'll find it online one way or the other. So folks, if there's one time in the world that you should lie and make up different names is when you're providing answers to those recovery questions. Don't give the actual answers, but give other answers that, that really are not the correct answers, but make sure that you remember the answers. So once again, eight tips that will secure your online world. I hope you found this information to be credible, I mean, and, and helpful to you and um, keep crushing it, doing what you're doing, and we'll catch up on the next video.